the weekly politics show. Uh, I am Councillor Perumia and co -host, uh, my co-host is Councillor Andrew Wood. So in this section, we're going to discuss, first of all, uh, the new um, construction noise team that the council is uh, putting together, or the management of construction. And it's an experimental team that they're putting together, first to focus on the Isle of Dogs and South Poplar area, where a lot of the development in Tower Hamlets is going and expected to be there according to the London plan. And I know Andrew's been, uh, has met the team, I think. And in, Andrew, is that true? You, have you met the team or? or um, yes, we had a, a, a meeting on, on Monday uh, night with them to kind of talk about what they're doing. So, so they're meant to be sort of dealing with what's called like construction mitigation. Um, so basically we have, as you've probably seen uh, out your window from your street, you know, there's a lot of tall buildings going up in the Isle of Dogs Canary Wharf area. And obviously at ground level that creates a lot of disruption, a lot of noise, a lot of air quality issues, uh, traffic issues. Um, and we've been complaining about these issues for years and, 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 you know, these buildings generate huge sums of money for Tower Hamlets Council and kind of Section 106 and SIL. And I think they got some Section 106 monitoring money and have decided to spend it on this new team of three people for 18 months. And if, they, and if it works, they'll then roll these ideas out across the borough because obviously, you know, there's a lot of development happening in, in other areas of Tower Hamlets as well. Um, so it's brand new. Um, and what they're basically asking for is, you know, what are the problems caused by construction? And, you know, and I wrote a nine page letter for them pointing out all of the issues. And I started off by saying, you know, we've had two people killed in construction related accidents in the last couple of years. The lady, you know, who was killed in her home when a crane fell on her and then another lady who was killed when bricks fell off a crane on, on the top of her head when she was walking past. So, you know, there are some quite profound implications from construction. So we'll see what happens. But one of the, the, the key things, I mean, lots of people complain about construction noise. And one of the things I particularly learned is that it's the health impact that's most important to mention when you are complaining about noise, not just because it, you know, it does have a health impact, it clearly does, but also in terms of the legislation and the guidance nationally is they kind of play a lot on, on sort of the health impact and construction. So for example, the, the government last year allowed construction sites to work later to catch up because of COVID or because you know, workers had to socially distance or had to come in you know, on, on public transport at different times. And they kind of said there was an exemption that if if the work was happening in a really dense residential area, um, that, that the council could say no. And of course, Tower Hamlets Council never say no to developers, or at least not on the Isle of Dogs. But one of the things when I, I then sort of, you know, asked the minister concerned, one of the things he then wrote back and sort of said, you know, he pointed out, you know, it was actually on health grounds. A lot of the legislation is, is based so if you do have noise issues and construction issues locally, when you do complain to the Tower Hamlets Council and noise team or the environmental health team, you know, do mention the, you know, the public, you know, that the health impacts on you, whether it's lack of sleep or air quality or noise or the vibration. Because quite often when I talk to people about these issues, the kind of words they use to me are kind of like the words you use with a doctor. But then people don't think to say that when they're reporting the noise. They just simply say it was really loud at three o'clock rather than sort of saying it was really loud at three o'clock and I couldn't sleep and I'm tired and I'm irritable and I'm stressed and I can't, and I can't work. You know, so if you say those things, then it has greater weight. Cool. So, so um, they're going to run this experiment for, say, three months and then do you anticipate this coming to cabinet or like a report etc that we need to watch out for if they're going to expand it etc or, or what's yeah. the next so i don't know yet um so the thing that started this off was was actually the gla a few years ago uh, wrote something called the isle of dogs and south popular opportunity area planning framework which is basically a guide uh, for more growth in the isle of dogs and so saying, you know, they would like up to 49,000 extra homes in the Isle of Dogs and South Poplar area. And the Mayor of London was talking uh, in that document about good growth. And there were some recommendations in that document. And one of them uh, was for a community development panel. And the other one was was for this construction mitigation team and, and also other recommendations as well. 
and they were made back in 2018. So at last, the council is acting on his recommendations and doing something about it. But but this is new. Um, we'll see what happens. It's, I think it's been set up. There's been no cabinet report. Um, so I guess they've already had the Section 106 money um, committed to, to pay for this. Um, because that was one of the questions the unions had, you know, where did the money come for this stuff? And I think the answer is the developers have paid for it already via Section 106 funds. And as a reminder, we have about £106 million of Section 106 funds sitting in the bank account. So there's a lot of cash out there to pay for some of these things. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, you know, potentially it's a really good step. It's a kind of thing that we've been asking for for years and years and years. And if it works, um, it could solve some of the problems that, that we have in the Isle of Dogs with construction. And then the lessons uh, you will benefit from elsewhere as well. The, the, the other issue that's come up is school placements. Um, I think people are getting letters. So in around about October time, you know, parents are expected to sort of like fill in a form, giving their preferences as to which school they would like their children to go to and it goes into some kind of independent system the council uh, subscribes to some sort of like automated computer system which basically puts in everything all the all the all the information about you and your child and then it the, the machine makes an answer that's my understanding of it um and so you get school placement so most parents get a school pl placement near their houses near where they live but some schools are oversubscribed and and that's why you're asked to put certain choices but some parents got the school that they didn't choose and 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 there is an appeal process i i got phone calls from um parents saying is something can you do it's nothing that us counselors could do it's a totally my understanding it's a totally independent system and the appeal process is independent as well. It's a bit like parking, challenging a parking fine, etc. Councillors don't have any influence over whether you get a parking ticket or how you appeal. The the it's self-contained process. So there is a link on the council website where you can appeal uh, to uh, the decision and you give your reasons for the appeal. But Andrew, have you come across this situation of parents not being happy with the school that's being allocated? And and then they have to appeal it. It's not, it's not something that councillors could intervene with the members' inquiry. Um, no, I've had issues with you know parents not being able to get through to the right people because of lockdown issues. So I've helped a few parents with kind of just you know information of where to go. The more difficult issue we've kind of got on the Isle of Dogs is we've only got two secondary schools. Uh, one of which uh, George Green's the council are going to rebuild. So I think some concern, some parents are concerned about their child going to a school that's being rebuilt. And then the other one is in a, a Canary Wharf College is in a temporary building. Um, and they're waiting to move into a new permanently built facility at Westbury Printworks, which keeps getting delayed. Um, so we have other issues sort of locally. But yes, you're, you're right. You, know, you have to appeal. And, you know, and this is one of the areas where, you know, the middle class has traditionally have been kind of very good at, you know, sharp elbows, uh, getting their child into the right school. But, you know, we have some really good secondary schools in Tower Hamlets as well. You know, so there are choices out there. But but on the on the back of that, I know in the last cabinet meeting, there, there was all these consultations about schools closing and decisions about schools opening and that that's because there's a population shift in the borough where um let families are moving it seems to be from the west of the borough to the east of the borough or uh, and the west of the borough is much more single individuals uh, professionals or if there were family dwellings they've been converted into hmos mm -hmm. etc um so so it, it seems like a sort of like a very fluid picture any comment on that and how's 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 that been impacting on your side where you're the councillor on the yeah because yeah, it's a weird thing we're closing schools and opening schools at the same time in the same borough this is primary schools and and one of the underlying issues is that the sort of the average number of babies per woman in tower hamlets uh, used to be 1.76 so for every woman 
1.76 babies, um, which is not replacement rate because actually you need, I think, 2.1 children per woman for this, the population to stay stable. So even 1.76 means your population will decline. But what's happened in the last 10 years is that that rate has dropped dramatically down to 1.35. Uh, which basically means there are fewer children being born to to each woman in in tower hamlets and and some of that is because parents are leaving so they're having kids but then they leave after nursery or before primary or before secondary they they don't stay and part of that is affordability and sort of just some parts of tower hamlets are just not family friendly enough and some of it is because the new demographics people moving into the area sort of you know it turns out that the hipsters who eat at the serial killer cafe tend not to have kids. Um, and it talks about that that youth, bul that bulge I was talking about, you know, lots of people in their 20s and 30s, and then they move away once once they have kids. Um, whereas in the Isle of Dogs, we have the same issue. We still have, you know, fewer babies per woman, but we have a lot more women because the population is growing. And one of the really interesting things is, is that because of all of the new affordable housing that's being built, we also have people moving from other parts of Tower Hamlets into new affordable yeah. housing on the Isle of Dogs. And some people are still taking their kids to schools back in the west of the borough and, and some are not. And that makes it even more complicated because I know parents who drive from the Isle of Dogs up to Roman Road to drop their kids off at primary school because uh, they don't want to change to yeah. primary schools. Um, and that makes it even more complicated. Yeah. It, so um, what, 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 what we'll do is we'll when we put the videos up for the show, we'll put the link to the appeals. Uh, page if you're uh, um, not happy with the decision the council made but also we'll put the link to the council website where it just talks about the school application process and the deadlines etc so 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 people understand the process but we're coming to the uh, end of the show um, Andrew any final thoughts we're going into a call-in on on livable streets um, hopefully they accept it um, <laughs> we'll get over overcome the technicality any final thoughts about how you think that's going to pan out and what you think the issues are going to be uh next week in the council so so i i think the emergency access issue i think is going to be quite important because i've just seen before the meeting started a video of an ambulance having to go around a roadblock and slowing mm -hmm. down dramatically to do that you know so there's a lot of video evidence about emergency vehicles having issues with these blocks and I think we have to find a solution that, you know, as a compromise on that one. Cool. So that's, well, uh, thank, thanks, Andrew. And thank, I just want to say thank you to the listeners for uh, listening in. Um, we're going to uh, end the show now, but uh, join us uh, next week, every Friday, 7 p.m. The